Hello all. Welcome to Concept E classes. Today we will study the fifth chapter of class 8 science coal and petroleum. So before we enter into this chapter, let's see a brief introduction. Coal and petroleum are natural resources. So what are resources? Resources are those materials which are useful for us. For example, air, water, sunlight, wind, forest, etc. Now these resources can either be natural or man-made. What are natural resources? Resources that are found or provided by nature are called as natural resources. For example, air, water, soil, minerals, sunlight, forest, coal, petroleum, natural gas, etc. What are man-made resources? The resources that are made by humans are called as man-made resources. Example, missions, vehicles, roads, furnitures, etc. So as coal and petroleum are natural resources, let's see a little more about natural resources. Can these resources like air, water or soil be exhaustible by human activities? Most of these natural resources are limited and they will eventually run out. So in the light of availability of these resources, natural resources can be broadly classified into two, inexhaustible natural resources and exhaustible natural resources. Inexhaustible natural resources are the resources which are present in unlimited quantity in nature and are not likely to be exhausted by human activities. Example, sunlight or air. Even though we use sunlight, air, these resources will not be exhausted, they will not run out. Whereas non-exhaustible resources, the amount of these resources in nature are limited. They can be exhausted by human activities. Example, forest, wildlife, minerals, coal, petroleum, natural gas, etc. So in this chapter, we will study about some of the exhaustible natural resources like coal, petroleum, and natural gas. These exhaustible resources are formed from the dead remains of living organisms. Fossils. Fossils are the remains of dead plants and animals which are obtained millions of years ago. And the fuels which are obtained from these fossils are called as fossil fuels. So in this chapter, we will study about basically three fossil fuels which are coal, petroleum and natural gas. So the first section of this chapter mainly deals with coal. Here we'll see what is coal, what are the uses of coal, the different forms of coal and how is coal formed. So let's begin. So the first question is what is coal? Coal is a black color substance which is hard as stone. This coal is a hard substance. It is a sedimentary rock actually that burns. It is mainly composed of carbon. It also constitutes hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur and nitrogen. The types of coal are peat, lignite, bituminous and anthracite. So anthracite is the hardest coal and it contains about 90 percentage of carbon and it is the best coal because the more the carbon content the best is the coal. Bituminous contains only 80 percentage of carbon and uh, lignite contains 70 percent and peat contains 60 percentage. In household all we use this bituminous coal because it produces more heat than peat and lignite and anthracite is mainly used for industrial purposes. Now what are the uses of coal? Coal was used for cooking food in villages. Nowadays we don't use coal but in the earlier days we uh, used to cook food using coal. And it was also used in railway engines to produce steam to run the engine. It's used in thermal powers, plants to produce electricity and it's also used as a fuel in various industries. So the next question that comes to our mind is, from where do we get coal or how is coal formed? So let's see, about 300 million years ago, the earth had dense forest in low-lying wetland areas. And these forests got buried under the soil due to natural processes like flooding or earthquakes. Then more and more soil got deposited over them and they were compressed. 
then the temperature also increased as they descended deeper and deeper that is as these uh, forests which got buried they got compressed and they sank deeper and deeper the temperature also increased and due to high temperature and pressure these dead plants got slowly converted to coal so in this image we can find coal here and then we'll extract and dig out this coal since coal contains mainly carbon the slow process of conversion of dead vegetation into coal is called as carbonization carbonization is a slow process of conversion of dead vegetation into coal and since coal was formed from the remains of vegetation coal is said to be a fossil fuel as i have explained in the previous slide a fossil fuel is a fuel which is obtained from the remains of dead living organisms we can say that coal is also a fossil fuel and then we should dig out this coal or extract or mine out this coal from the earth so this is how coal is formed so this is an image of a coal mine so usually coal is under the earth and we have to dig it up or mine it up so this process of extracting coal from the ground is called as coal mining and there are different types of mining such as underground mining surface mining mountain mining so if you want to know more about it message me in the comment section and i'll give you a detailed lecture about this now let's see what happens when coal is heated in air when coal is heated in air it burns and it produces carbon dioxide and when coal is heated in the absence of air it forms a number of products and that process is called as destructive distillation and some of those products are coke coal tar and coal gas so let's discuss each of these coal products briefly so the first one is coke it is a black substance which is tough and porous when powdered coal is heated in distillation process the substance which is left after heating is known as coke and it is the purest form of carbon that is it contains 98 percentage of carbon it is used in the manufacture of steel and it is a good fuel too so the second product is coal tar coal tar is a black thick liquid with an unpleasant smell it is a mixture of about 200 substances that is it consists of different carbon compounds like naphthalene benzene etc and it is obtained by heating powdered coal it is also used so let's say uses of coal tar for the manufacturing of synthetic dyes drugs explosives perfumes plastics paints photographic materials etc naphthalene balls used to repel moths and other extracts are also obtained from coal tar and coal tar is used in surfacing roads but nowadays a petroleum product called as bitumen is used in place of coal tar for metalling roads so i hope you all have seen how we tar the road by using coal tar but nowadays it has been replaced with bitumen it is a petroleum product third one is coal gas coal gas is a mixture of gases like hydrogen methane and carbon monoxide it is obtained during the process of coal to get coke that is when coal is processed to make coke coal gas is produced it is mainly used as a fuel in many industries because all these gases are highly combustible that is it produce heat on burning therefore it is used as a fuel in many industries near the coal processing plants coal was used for street lighting for the first time in london in 1810 but now it is used as a source of heat rather than light so we saw what is coal what are the uses of coal the different types of coal the different products of coal and how is coal formed now the next section is petroleum let's see what is petroleum petroleum is a dark oily yellowish li black liquid with an unpleasant smell we know about petrol which is used as a fuel in automobiles like car motorcycles etc and diesel are obtained from the natural sourced petroleum The word petroleum is derived from the Latin word petra meaning rock and oleum meaning oil as it is mined between the rocks under the earth that is petroleum is obtained from the rocks inside the earth that is why it is called as petroleum petra meaning rock and oleum meaning oil so how is petroleum formed 
petroleum is formed from the living organisms in the sea that is when these living organisms die their bodies settle at the bottom of the sea and they get covered with layers of sand and clay and just as we saw in the formation of coal over millions of years these dead living organisms they transform into petroleum and natural gas due to the absence of air high temperature and high pressure this figure here it shows the deposits of petroleum and natural gas that is a layer containing petroleum and gas is actually above the water level why is that because oil and gas are lighter than water and they do not mix with it so this is how petroleum is formed and we could take out this oil by using oil wells now this is an image of an oil well an oil well is a boring in the earth that is it is a hole which is dug into the earth that is designed to bring petroleum oil to the surface and usually some natural gas is also released along with the oil so we saw what is petroleum and how is petroleum formed and we studied that we could extract this petroleum using an oil well but we cannot use this petroleum as such this petroleum is a mixture of various constituents such as petroleum gas petrol diesel lubricating oil so the process of separating these various constituents or fractions of petroleum is called as refining so we could use petroleum only after refining it and this pet process is carried out inside a petroleum refinery this is a refinery petroleum refinery so some of the constituents of petroleum and uses are described here the first one is lpg liquefied petroleum gas it is mainly used as a fuel for home like uh, cooking gas and industry then it petrol it's used as a motor fuel aviation fuel solvent for dry cleaning kerosene it's a fuel for stoves lamps and for jet aircrafts then diesel is also another fraction of petroleum it's used for as a fuel for heavy motor vehicles and also for electric generators lubricating oil mainly used for lubricating many machines or engines paraffin wax mean for oil making ointments candles vaseline etc bitumen is also a constituent of petroleum which is used in paints and also for surfacing road so petrochemicals are also substances that are obtained from processing of petroleum and natural gas they are used in the manufacture of detergents fibers polythenes and other man made plastics hydrogen gas which is obtained from natural gas is used in the production of fertilizers Petroleum is called as black gold due to its high commercial importance. So that's all for petroleum. We saw what is petroleum, how is petroleum formed and the different constituents or fraction of petroleum. So the next section of this chapter is natural gas. So let's see what is natural gas. Natural gas is a mixture of gases consisting mostly of methane along with a small percentage of ethane, propane and butane. it is formed when decomposed plant and animal matter under the earth are exposed into intense heat and pressure over millions of years that is it is also formed from the dead organisms which are buried under the earth thousands of years and these organisms decompose in the absence of air to form natural gas and usually natural gas is found near the petroleum in underground and they are extracted by the oil drilling okay so natural gas is a very important fossil fuel as it can be transported easily through pipes natural gas is stored under high pressure as compressed natural gas this compressed natural gas or cng is used for power generation it is now being used as a fuel for transport vehicles it is a very clean fuel because it is less polluting that is it does do not produce any smoke while burning and it do not leave any residue on burning as well the great advantage of cng is that it can be used directly for burning without any refining it can be used directly and it can be supplied through pipes into homes and factories such networks of cng pipelines exist in gujarat and some parts of delhi Natural gas is used in the manufacturing of number of chemicals and fertilizers. We already saw that the hydrogen gas which is obtained from natural gas is used for making fertilizers like urea. And in our country, natural gas has been found in Tripura, Rajasthan, 
Maharashtra and the Krishna Godavari Delta. So these are the pipes that are used to transport natural gas from one place to another. So the last section of this chapter is natural resources are limited. We studied about some of the exhaustible natural resources like coal, petroleum and natural gas and these natural resources it takes about a millions of years to get converted into fuels from dead organisms and the reserves of these fossil fuels will last only a few hundred years that is because of the high demand of such fossil fuels there will be a scarcity of resources in the future and because of burning of these fuels air pollution is also caused and as a result global warming therefore it is necessary that these precious fuels should be used only when there is an absolute necessity so the petroleum conservation research association have given some preventive measures to save the fuel or like petrol and diesel while driving the tips are we should drive at a constant and moderate speed as far as possible we should switch off the engine at traffic lights or at a place where you have to wait we should ensure correct tire pressure and we should ensure the regular maintenance of the vehicle thereby we could save this fuel from exhausting so that's all for chapter 5 tune in soon for the next session the next session will be the video on question and answers of chapter 5 don't forget to share like and subscribe if you find the contents useful thank you so much may god bless you all take care bye bye